Let's talk to Vince Cable, the business secretary. Good evening to you. How significant is, is this intervention from George Osborne on the minimum wage today? Well, I'm pleased with it. I mean, he's effectively endorsing the guidance that I gave to the Local Bay Commission. In fact, I announced at our Liberal Democrat conference in September last how the, uh, we wanted the, uh, the Local Bay Commission to proceed. In other words, to increase the minimum wage, you know, reflecting the fact that we got in recovery, to restore its real value. Did but, you know he was going to say this today? Um, no, I didn't, but he did contribute a letter which uh, formed part of the evidence that I put forward to the Low Pay Commission. So be... when you heard him say this, were you surprised? Um, I, yes, I was a little surprised, but I'm, as I say, I'm not taken aback by it. I think, you know, imitation is the best form of flattery, and when you have the Chancellor backing the policy that I've gone out and endorsed, I... And of I'm course it will be, it. as Business Secretary, your final decision. It would have been polite it, to inform you, wouldn't it, today? Well, as I say, he wrote to me yesterday and he set out his views on it and it's formed part of the package of government evidence of the Lope Commission, but you're right, I, this does come to me and I will decide on it. Um, the tradition is that Secretary of State accept the views of the Low Pay Commission and, and it is important I think that, that this whole thing has become very politicised that we do recognise this is an independent body, it's non-political, it's non-partisan, it's unions and employers, their views have to be respected. Do you wonder perhaps if George Osborne is using what he said today to that change people's perceptions of the Conservative Party having cut the top rate of income tax? Well, I, I don't know what his motives are, but as well, I say, well, he's come you, to the, you, you talk I, to him. I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy that he's him. come to the right place. Uh, I think it is very, very important that we concentrate on the fairness agenda, as your comments uh, a few moments ago. You know, there is a sense of, you know, people have been through a very hard time. You know, we have to concentrate on people at the bottom end of the scale. The Liberal Democrat approach has been we lift people out of tax and of course we've got this approach to the minimum wage and we've also deal with the inequalities at the top which is why we want to tax wealth as well but I'm glad that George Osborne is, uh, is it, you know, aligned with us on the minimum wage approach. And uh, why, why has it taken two years? I mean you say it's really important to help yeah. people on those low incomes, you talked about raising the, the threshold. Why have you done nothing? on the minimum wage since you've been in government? Well, because that's not been the recommendation of the Low Pay Commission. They, we have actually increased it, uh, but you know, their concern throughout has been you, you don't want to increase wages in a way that creates large-scale unemployment. That's been their remit and that's the way they've interpreted it and their recommendations to me have been that we should increase the minimum wage but we shouldn't displace employment. And, and one of the big success stories of the last few years, and it's been a very, you know, it's been a very tough time, and, you know, the British economy has taken a pounding as a result of the financial crisis. But um, employment has held up, you know, 1.3 million more jobs, um, unemployment's fallen to... 7.4%. Uh, it's lower than it is in France and Sweden and other countries. So that we don't want to spoil that story. We want jobs to continue to grow. Mm. And when you've tried to persuade George Osborne of the merits of increasing the minimum wage in the past, what's he said to you? Um, well, I, I, mean, it's, I don't think he sort of fundamentally disagrees. I mean, he is concerned, as I am, and, and indeed the Low Pay Commission, that we approach this in a way that we want to help people on low earnings, but mm. we don't want to have adverse effects on the economy. And right. the guidance I gave to the Loke Commission asked them to look at this in a more holistic way, I and mean, to look at the wider economic effects, take account of the fact the economy is now recovering, giving an so incentive to right people now. to work. So the time is right to be more positive, but they've got to make the decision, they're an independent body. Yes. They make the recommendations, as you've already said, it's, it's mm. your final call. You, you, is it right that you can be so generous with businesses' money? Um, well, th that's not the way we, we see it. Businesses are represented on the Low Pay Commission, uh, and that's why we have to be responsible. In fact, I don't think any previous Secretary of State has challenged the basic recommendation of the Low Pay Commission. I did last year of the apprenticeship wage, but to a small extent, there was an issue of principle there. Mm. But we do recognise that simply passing the costs onto business is not, not right because they would in turn pass it on to consumers or they but would that's what will lay happen. people I off. mean the CBI, the British Chambers of Commerce, the Federation of Small Business, they are a lot more cautious than you and now the mm. Chancellor. Well I'm being very cautious and indeed the guidance I've given to the Low Pay Commission is yes we do want to see increases in low pay, we mm. do want to, to have real improvements but it's got to take account 
of the effects on employment and the wider economy, and that, of course, uh, involves business profitability. Right. Let me ask you about uh, Ed Miliband's plans for reforming the banks. What do you mm. think? Well, there are certain elements I agree with. We do need more competition in particularly business banking, but many of the things he's calling for have actually happened. I mean, two new banks have been created out of RBS and Lloyds. I mean, Williams and Glynn and TSB, new banks that have been carved out. They're already up and, up and running. I've established uh, something called the Business Bank, government financed. It is supporting new competitors, for example, internet-based crowdfunding. Uh, we're, we're financing that, the kind of uh, uh, what's called peer-to-peer -peer lending, which is happening on a rapid scale. So we are getting more competition. I mean, what his proposals don't clearly indicate is, is exactly what kind of bank is he trying to create. There's lots of competition for mortgages, not a problem there. The real problem is for small business, small medium-sized company, and we are taking action on that already. But I do agree with him. Yeah, we do need more competition. We've been very badly served by the banks in the past. You'd expect me to ask about Lord Renard. Would you like to see him removed from the party? Well, I think there is a lot of frustration after this very strong report that came yesterday that the party's rules don't permit that action. Uh, but what's happened is the party leader, Nick Clegg, and the, and the president, Tim Farron, are now discussing this closely and seeing how we can proceed and whether our rules need revisiting. But would you like to see him removed? Well, I, I, I think I'd rather leave it to them. They're, they're, they're the key decision makers in the party. They have to operate within the rules. I don't want to add a, an independent view to that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Vince Cable, Business Secretary. Thank you.